like to welcome everyone to a very special interview edition of Seven Minute Takes. We are very, very, very fortunate to sit down with a uh, uh, two creatives from an excellent, very, very intriguing, and 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 very, uh, shall we say, depth plumbing uh, thriller uh, coming to us from a Dark Sky Films. Uh, we are very fortunate to be sitting down with the director of such films as Here Comes the Devil and the ABCs of Death, as well as uh, one of the principal leads. Uh, we'd like to welcome to 7 Minute Takes filmmaker Adrian Garcia Bogliano and actor Francisco, Francisco Barrio. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? Doing good, Hello. man. Thank you. Thank you for, for taking the time. Oh, no problem. We really appreciate this. Uh, Adrian, I must say, I, I, I truly love Here Comes the Devil. And the ABC of Death is also very near and dear to my heart. And so it's, it's a pleasure and honor. And San Francisco, we, we, I really enjoyed your work in uh, Here Comes the Devil as well. Um, Adrian, I was, I was just curious. This is uh, uh, an interesting, um, not departure, but an interesting um, uh, side path for you with this film. Uh, what was the, uh, the beginnings of this? What was the genesis? Where did the idea come from? Well, the idea was to, you know, after after late phases, uh, was to make a, you know, something, uh, I think a lot more, more personal in a way, something that had to do more with, you know, the place where I live, uh, and uh, you know, some some stories and some characters that I that I know of, um, of course, you know, uh, uh, seen through a through a very uh, deforming lens. Let's say I, it's something that you know. I I I think it's a, like an exaggerated version of of things that I you know that I I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, you know, have to with you know being on your on your thirties and push to achieve success uh, at whatever you know whatever it takes. Um, um, so I was I was trying to go to a more familiar uh, place and try to. You know, uh, and, and, and I wanted to try, you know, a couple of, of new things and, and shoot a film in a very, uh, a very little conventional way with a very small crew and, uh, you know, have the chance to work again with, with Francisco after Here Comes the Devil and give him like a, a, a bigger, you know, a bigger part for him to, you know, to really explore things that I wanted, uh, to try. So that was, that was the basic, you know, the basic reason why this film came together and also like I, I wanted to try um, you know I wanted to try in a structure where you know in terms of the script I wanted to try a structure where every scene leads you to the next where every scene is absolutely necessary to 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 move towards the next one uh, while this is something that sounds like very you know a very common thing a very ABC you know type of thing of the of the of the screenplay book, um, on the of the of the books of how to how to write a screenplay, um, you know, I I think that that no not many movies use that kind of structure today. Like there is a, a lot of a lot of movies where you see that you know you can take a scene and move it around. And it's not going to make a difference, but here is like every scene leads you directly to the next, and you cannot really move around things. Uh, so that was something that I wanted to, to try. You know, I wanted to force myself to write something that, you know, where the structure is like, you know, these, uh, you know, like, it's like if they were musical notes, and these notes lead you to the next and to the next, and otherwise you don't have a melody. You just start, you know, moving around those notes. Um, so that's, that's what I wanted to try also, and also I wanted to push to a, to a structure where I could Something like the uh, like the um, uh, South Korean thriller has been, you know, doing uh, in the past decade or so, where you where you have like a fake ending, like a fake resolution at the middle of the movie, and it really toys with the expectations of the audience because the audience doesn't know anymore what to expect after that. So that th those were like the main ingredients that I was thinking. Yes, you know, part of that misdirection is uh, Francisco's performance. Uh, uh, we see 
<laughs> Francisco, your character uh, really going through some changes and struggling with something, but it's it's not what we expect when we get to the end. Um, uh, how did you kind of construct that? Where, where did you go? Because it, it, it goes into some pretty dark places. Uh, well, it, it was like a, a beginning. Uh, uh, I read the script and I talked for the first time about Scherzo Diabolico with Adrian. Like, for me, it was obvious that like, this was like a major challenge for me. And I was very excited and very happy about that. And <clears throat> the way we we work, Adrian and I, since here comes Devil, like, we have like a, a very close relation and, and we have like a lot of confidence one to each other. So the, the first thing that we, we start doing was just to talk about the character, to talk about the film, to talk about the relation that this character has with each different other character uh, through the film. And just to to get the ideas that Adrian has from from character and, and put it down like paper and then just bring my own ideas about the character and then say, talk talk about them with, with Adrian and just try to get like uh, to, the, to a common point between both of us and then start build the, the relations with the other actors and actresses. So it was just uh, that in a way working with Adrian and, and what I was interested in as, as a, a performer, as an actor or as an artist, it's, it's more to bring like something more uh, brutal, more real, more to the character, like uh, for me, that that's the powerful of, of the characters in film. Just bring something very, very human that can connect, like the audience, uh, with with the characters, so that that you can feel recognized uh, with that character, and that you can feel that you could be Aaron uh, doing that kind of thing. Yeah, and try to make like a middle class uh, uh, human want to be like better but at the same time it's it's a it's a complex human you have like a lot of have uh, a lot of deep feelings a lot of fears a lot of you know like it's, it's like an, like like try to feel like a complex human as as everybody of all we are like complex humans so it, that was i was very interested about that and this was this kind of character that that i could make like a lot of different comments comments during the during the film of a lot of different things that for me are important human uh, things. Yeah, so, you, you really can so feel. Yeah. yeah, you can feel his choices. I mean, uh, they're 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 bad choices, <laughs> but but in a, in after especially after the a bit of the, the the twist of the plot, you're like, okay, I can see why he did that, but but oh man. <laughs> yeah. He really does oh, uh, take it there. He's, he's not a, a very smart guy. He's not like a real billion. He's not like a bad guy, but he's not a good guy. So you have to, uh, I have to work uh, in the middle of those uh, complicated concepts just to bring like a, a real person that can fail, that can have a great plan and can work in a, in a moment and then you fail. Because we fail as humans. So, so that, that was very interesting for me. It was just like when I was reading the script and when I was just uh, like trying to analyze the, the character and everything. It's like, it's very real. Very like, I was like a lot of fails. I was like, so this is interesting for me as an actor that there's something I can go through like deeper. And, and, uh, and, and that would be like more powerful character and, and on screen. So, so yeah, that was more or less the, the way I approached the card. Well, and and, and it succeeds. All the all the, uh, the the actors in this movie really bring something uh, just a unique and powerful perspective. Um, uh, Adrian, how, how did you uh, uh, how did you go about uh, the casting on this? Um, you've worked with Francisco before, but uh, could you talk a little bit about the uh, the other actors in the cast and and how they got involved with the project? Sure, I would. You know, um, it was a it was a it took it took quite a while to to get all the character all the uh, cast together. We were 
are actually already starting to shoot when we when we finally got uh, Daniela, who played the uh, Anabella character, that girl. Um, so you know, it was it was a it was a complicated process. Uh, uh, Francisco helped us a lot with a number of of friends that he recommended and were actors from the you know, uh, theater team mostly. And then uh, we were like really really trying to get people from from you know with with very different backgrounds, with it, which I think is a lot of fun uh, when making a movie like trying to get people that work in completely different things like we had people here that for instance Daniela who never uh, had made you know uh, you know she, she only made a, a small role in the movie for this so she a couple of short films so she didn't have much experience in the film but she was you know, doing some some theater and uh has uh, another of the, of the actresses, Pawalba, came from came more from from doing commercials, and we have another of the actors who came more like from from what they call here uh, studio homes, which are like uh, movies made straight studio that are made like really quick. So it was fun to kind of combine all these people that come from completely different places, uh, and yeah, I mean. It's always a fun thing because I, I feel like they all have some sort of tension, but in a good way, you know, uh, where, where they need to figure out how to work with the other one. We had also uh, Jorge Molina, who's uh, like a legend, a good friend of mine, and a legend on, on, on the Cuban cinema. Uh, he, he's been making a lot of underground stuff in Cuba for for the past, uh, I don't know, 25 years. And uh, he, he's got a style of acting that is absolutely great. He's like, we joke, but he's like the clothes of Latin America. And, uh, you know, he's got a very powerful energy that was a big contrast with what uh, Francisco was doing. So it was it was kind of fun to try to, to find a, you know, a common ground Yes, uh, his his uh, his uh, shall we say his uh, shattering is a large part of how the plot progresses, and um, yeah, his performance really uh, uh, is a great contrast to Francisco's. Uh, on that uh, on that note, you know, uh, I, I will say that the, the film uh, does go into some some very dark region, and there had to be a lot of trust between you and the and the cast. Um, to kind of delve into some of the subject matter and where where some of these things go, um, how, how did you kind of uh, approach the cast about some of the more, uh, shall we say, uh, difficult scenes in the movie? How, how did you build that relationship? Well, you know, I think it's always a matter of uh, being very sure that what you're asking is really necessary for the film, and not just putting, you know, gratuitous things. Just for the sake of it, uh, I you know I I love for instance to have you know uh, a lot of sexual elements on my film. Uh, you know, if you if you're doing something like late faces, of course, it makes absolutely no sense with the movie. Uh, but mostly, you know, for the most part, I I, I you know the the sexual elements for instance, something that I think is it, uh, you know a very crucial part of my film.
that really shows. I mean, uh, they, yeah, and again, no, uh, no spoilers here for those who haven't had a chance to see the film yet, but, uh, uh, definitely there, there are some, some, some areas it goes and some buttons push that, uh, uh, again, challenge the watcher and I'm sure challenge the actors. Uh, uh, Francisco, can, can you speak to that? How, how did that, uh, process of trust get built up? Uh, you, you have to do some pretty heinous things at a certain point. And then how did you kind of yeah. prepare for that? I, I, I think I always start building that from here come to the devil. Like I, like I, I try just to do my best. All, all the films that I work with, and I'm just trying to build like a good relation with my fellow, uh, uh, with, with with all the other actors, and and I think like uh, a very important uh, uh, thing of this is, is how Adrian, <laughs> uh, as a director, you know, like um, it's very comfortable to work with him. I think like the the best thing for an actor is when when you have like a, a director that that is very clear of what he wants, like very secure of what he wants, but at the same time he's very respectful and at the same time he's very he's very open to everything. He's very open to listen. So I think like Adrian like makes that uh, deal with all his actors like very quickly, like with trust in Adrian. It's, it's very it's very easy to trust in Adrian. Something that just came immediately. And he tried to make like a good environment, like all the people that work in here, really nice people, and we all make like a, a really nice family all the time. Uh, like it wasn't here come to the table, and then happened here. So just like a, a starting point that's very important. It's, it's just just to trust, and then you focus on on the scene, you know. But you are not worry about like I'm naked. I have to do these things. I have to. You know, like, you're just doing your things because you feel protected, you feel secure, you feel that there's something you're uh, taking care of in, in a real way. So, so what I try to do is just to build, like, uh, a trust relation, like, for example, with the other actress, that that I know that they're very vulnerable, like, like Adrian said, like, for example, Daniela was, uh, have, like, a you experience making films and then have like a big huge role with very different uh, difficult things. So just try to be with them and just try to make them enjoy what they are doing and try to to make it playful and joyful and and uh, and, I, and I think it works like that. But it but it's very it's much more comfortable that that you can see in the film like so so it, it's very nice to work like that. Yeah, the, the trust of the actors. Yeah, yeah, the trust of the actors. You can see uh, there was a lot of, uh, of, of of faith that this will turn out and it will be uh, it will be strong and it will support the film. <laughs> Even though right at the moment it happens, you're like, wow, that that's that's pretty wild. Uh, but uh, it it really did, uh, as the, the the narrative goes, unveil everything, and you really did put yourself in everybody's shoes at one point or the other. Right. Well, right, that was the idea, not to, not to create, you know, like villains or stuff like that. Like, they all move, like, in a very gray area where they're, you know, pushing somebody else at some point. Like, you know, so Adam is clearly, you know, he's the lead of the movie and, you know, the one who's doing the, the you know, uh, at least for a, for a good part of the movie, he's doing the most obscure thing. But everybody's, like, pushing everybody. Nobody's like a really nice character, which is something that I, I like to explore. Mostly when I make like, you know, smaller independent films, I try to explore that because, you know, producers don't really like uh, to have uh, uh, characters that are not very likable. Not the least. On the, you know, the, on, as main characters, they always like, you know, uh, to have, to have yeah, easier characters for the people to identify with. So, uh, you know, it, it was a good chance to try to do something where everybody's a little bit, you know, a little bit shitty at some point. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I will say if if if, uh, if Hitchcock were working today, he'd be making a film very, very similar to this. And uh, I, I think that you, you definitely can be proud of 
um, what you managed to, to accomplish as, as a group. Again, uh, the film Shazero de la will be out May 3rd, uh, wide release, uh, viewer on demand. And I um, have to ask, uh, Adrian, um, what's on the uh, agenda next? Uh, what, what else is uh, perhaps in the, uh, the, the future uh, for your projects? Sure, I have I have three or four different movies, uh, actually different countries uh, that are you know just uh, uh, being cooked at the moment. Like I'm trying to get finance for all that stuff. Uh, a couple of things here in Mexico, something in the U.S. and something in Europe also uh, that are like you know they're like my next uh, ideas for for movies. And you know we we'll, we still have to see if if uh, any of that. Uh, happens, but I'm I'm hopeful that you know I'll be I'll be shooting something before the end of the year for sure. And uh, Francisco, um, where can uh, people check out more of your work, uh, or uh, if they want to uh, see some other your performances, uh, what should they look for? Uh, I think uh, really in iTunes, it's uh, Camino Josh Water Camino, that it's uh, the Toy Bell and Nacho Vigalondo. It's an action film, and it, that I, it was uh, it was a month ago. I, I don't know if it's still in iTunes, but maybe you can find it there. And well, Curse of the Abolico, obviously. And then I don't know exactly. Like there's gonna be like some premieres of other films, but I don't know the exact date. Um, but now I'm working on on most film theater that I that the most I work with theater. So I'm working my theater piece and touring with another show that I have, and that's it for now. Well, we, we look forward to uh, seeing both of you much into the future. Again, uh, if you're a fan of Here Comes the Devil, uh, I, I love the ABCs of Death. Um, uh, definitely uh, make it a, a point to go check out this film. I just had one quick last question, gentlemen. I have to ask, uh, are, are both or either of you classical music fans? I actually, I, I like, I like a lot. I don't, I can say that I'm a fan. I'm so, I don't, I don't know that much. I have to make a lot of research actually to get the, the right, the right pieces. But I, I do, I do like hear classical music for sure. <laughs> yeah, me too. It happens. I'm, I'm not like a huge fan, but I, Every day in the moment, I'm just trying, just reading or working on something like I'm just like, so, so. I don't think I'll ever be able to listen to some piano sonatas in the same way again after watching this film. So, so kudos. I uh, really, really uh, uh, think that this is a, a very intriguing filler again, uh, 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 not uh, so much a departure from Adrian's previous work as just a, a very a uh, different to pathway uh, again um, uh, something that w- for those fans of international horror um will i think get a lot of kick out of this for our our viewers especially in mexico um i think you'll you'll see a lot of things reflected that uh, reflect but but also kind of give some more insight to uh, modern life and um uh, again i'd urge everyone to 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 check this out uh, though i will say it is definitely for uh, the mature members of the audience uh, don't 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 make us a family night with Cesaro uh, Diablo. Gentlemen, I really appreciate your time this uh, afternoon. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, future work, and uh, thank you again for uh, your very generous uh, time to sit down with us. Thank you, for your time. Thank you. Once again, Jason Stewart here on Age of the Nerd. We appreciate you checking us out for all things pop culture. Stay tuned as we come back next week with a lot more that floats your boat. We'll catch you on the flip side.